Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I'm now going to go through question number six from the January 2016 International A Level at Excel paper um, from this is the Statistics S1 paper. And this question is about some guy called UG or some yeah, girl actually called UG. She's investigating the weight of 10 young rabbits. She recalls the weight in X grams of each rabbit and the results are summarized below. The sum of X is 8,360 and the sum of X minus X bar all squared equals 63,840. Calculate the mean and the standard deviation of the weights of these rabbits. Okay, so first of all, the mean is when you have all the entries added together and divide by the number of entries. And here we have 10 entries because there's 10 rabbits. And sigma means the sum of, and x is the weight. So this is the sum of all the rabbits' weights, and this is the number of rabbits. So the mean, which is given the symbol x bar, is equal to the sum of all the rabbits' weights divided by the number of rabbits, which is 8,360 divided by 10, which is 836 grams. So that's the mean weight of all the rabbits. Then it asks for the standard deviation. Now, a lot of people, they just memorize formula, or formally, I should say. And they do not understand, you know, where they come from, or they don't listen when, you know, certain things are being explained in class. And when it comes to a question like this, which gives you something in a slightly different format, then students have problems, okay? So in the beginning of standard deviation, when I teach the topic to my students, I make sure they understand where, where the formula that we eventually use actually comes from. Okay, well, I don't show them how to derive it, but where's, where's it, what's the original formula that then gets manipulated to give us what we use? We use something for variance, which is um, the square, the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. Okay, which would be basically the sum of all the x values after they've been squared, divided by the number of entries minus the mean, which is what we just found here, all of this, so you can say the sum of x over n, all of that squared, the mean squared. That's the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean with the variance, and the square root of that would be the standard deviation. That's what we learned, that formula, that formula that's what's in most people's head, the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. Now, they didn't give us this. So how do we make this into this? We don't need to, because where did this formula come from in the first place? It came from the manipulation of this, basically, which we don't need to know how to do, but we should understand that variance actually is the average, um, you could say, the average of the sum of the squares of the distances or the differences between each term and the mean. So you take each value and you subtract from it the mean and you square that. So you have x minus x bar. So each each value is subtracted, the mean is subtracted from it, and then that squared, that gives you the square of the differences between each value and the mean, and you add them together, and you divide that by the number of entries. This is actually where this formula comes from. This is the original formula. It basically tells you, it gives you an average, a measure of an average distance of each entry from the mean. That's what the variance actually is, and the standard deviation is the square root of that, okay? So that's basically what we have to use here. We have to use the fact that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, which is basically the, diff the sum of the squares of each item from the mean divided by the number of entries. So we already have all of these things. We have this as 63,840 divided by the number of entries, which is 10. So it's basically the square root of 6,300 so 6,384. Okay, that will give us our answer. So we can take a calculator and work that out. So it's the square root of 6,384. And that gives us 79.899. 79.8, and it continues like this. So we want to round it to 3SF. So we, we say that the uh, standard deviation is 79.9, you could say. That's the standard deviation, and the mean, x bar, 836 grams. 
79.9 grams. Okay, so there we got the mean and the standard deviation. That's sorted out. Then it says, given that the median weight of these rabbits is 815 grams, the median weight of these rabbits is 815 grams, describe giving a reason the skewness of these data. So we know that the, the median, which is Q2, is 815, and we know the mean, which is X bar, is 836 grams. We've, we've figured out that already. So therefore, we can say that the mean, the, the median is less than the mean. Okay, the median is less than the mean. So when that happens, we have what's called positive skew. So we can just write that answer down. That's enough. Now, how do I explain that? Well, the way I like to think about it is this. The, this x axis here for the, you know, when you're doing a histogram, the x axis here represents the value of the median or the mean. Here, the value of the median is less than the mean. Now, in terms of how high the bars are in a histogram, the median will uh, will always be a bar will be a bar which is higher than the mean, and the mode will be the highest. So the mode is the highest, and the median, and then the mean. Unless it's it's symmetrical, they'll all be the same in the middle. But when you skew data like this, then the median is less than the mean. So the median will be a higher bar that's higher, but its value is less than the mean. So the mean will be on the right of it some somewhere. So you can see that this is more concentrated on the lower end. It's going to give this type of shape where it's positive skew. If it was the other way around, if the, if the median was bigger than the mean, it would be like this. And it would give this kind of negative skew. Okay, so we know that this is positive skew because the median, the median is less than the mean. As you can see, the median is 815, as they told us, and the mean is 836. So it's got positive skew. All right, so that's part B done. Now for part C. It says two more rabbits weighing 760, 776 grams and 896 grams are added to make a group of 12 rabbits. State giving a reason how the inclusion of these two rabbits would affect the mean. Okay, so here, sometimes they say, state without any further calculation how these would affect the mean. And here you could do that, and I think that would be fine if you explain it. But in this case, they did not tell us uh, to avoid or not you know, show any calculation. So you could do this by just actually calculating. You could show... For example, that when you add to the sum, so you have 8,360 plus 776, okay, and plus 896, and you divide this now by 12 because there's 12 entries, you can show what happens to the mean. So if you calculate that, you get... 8,360 plus 776 plus 896 divided now by 12 because there's now 12 entries because two more added. You can see it didn't change the mean. The mean stayed the same. So the mean is the same. So this could be your reason here. Just showing that calculation. That's fine. All right, because it didn't say describe without, you know, calculation. However, how do we understand that the mean is the same in this case? Well, the, the mean is 836 to start with. Now, this is, if you think about it, that's 60 less than the mean, and that's 60 more than the mean. So basically, supposing I was to add another number which was equal to the mean to this group, all right? If I, if I added, added 836, just added one more number, you see that it, will, it won't affect, the, the mean will still stay the same the mean will be the same still, right? Because, you know, you've added a number that's exactly the same as the mean. So it's, got, it's, it's like you've got, you know, um, uh, you know, right now, 12 times 30, uh, sorry, 10 times, uh, 10 times uh, 836 will give you this. So 11 times 836 will give you 836 more, more than this. So if you add the same number to the mean that the mean is, okay, um, you know, you have one more, Number, so you have to divide it by one more, you'll end up with the same number. So if you add the number that's exactly the same as the mean to the mean, it doesn't change the mean. Okay, the mean stays the same. And here what we've done is we've, we've basically added, um, you know, two numbers which are like, you know, the one is 60 below the mean, the other 60 above the mean, they kind of cancel each other, right? So if you con consider them both together, it's like two times the mean. All right, so it won't change the mean. You add, it's like you've added two numbers, both of them the same as the mean. It's the equivalent of doing that. They're both equivalent. Together, they make up, you know, 
uh, the mean plus the mean again if you add if you add them together so you got two more entries they both add together to give you the same as twice the mean so therefore it's not going to change the mean so you can think about that in in terms of logic like that without having to calculate if you wanted to and that would have been fine as well here right? and sometimes they actually require you not to calculate and they tell you they want you to see how you're thinking now part d a lot of people have problems with something like this now you know if you calculate this as well it's perfectly fine so you could calculate this you could say okay we know right now that you have um this okay is equal to at the moment before we add anything to it it's um 63840, 63,840. And we're adding two more numbers, which are, you know, away from the mean. So basically what we're going to, what we got is 63,840 plus, then we got 776 minus 836 squared plus, and then we have um, 896 minus 836 squared but now divided by 12 okay and we want to find the square root of all of that that will give you the new standard deviation that's a new standard deviation which is going to give you so if we take our values so we have the square root of and we have 63,840 plus and that's going to be 60 squared all right Plus, and that's also going to be 60 squared. This is minus 60 squared. When you square, it's going to become the same as 60 squared. When you square, a negative number becomes positive. That's going to give you 3,600. And that's also going to give you 3,600. Okay. And you divide that by now 12, because there's 12 numbers. That gives you 4 times th th root, 70, th uh, root 370, which is 76.941. That's 76.9. For one, so you can say 76.9. So we can see the standard deviation has actually got less. Okay, which is, yeah, the standard deviation is less. So we can say the standard deviation, therefore, standard deviation is less. Now, how can we understand this if they said to us, explain this without any calculation, without any calculation? Okay, now, what we, what we have to realize is the standard deviation is the average distance, basically, each entry is away from the mean. That's what it actually is, okay? Uh, regardless of it's, whether it's above the mean or below the mean, it doesn't matter. As long as it's just how far away things are spread out away from the mean. Now, if we have the standard deviation as like almost 80, and we're adding two entries who are away from the mean, how much? 60 away from the mean. Okay, they're 60 away from the mean. So they are they, they, their distance away from the mean is less than the actual standard deviation of the other 10 entries. So because their distance is less than the, the average of the other 10 entries away from the mean, that's going to cause the standard deviation to become less, okay? Because you're adding a smaller difference, okay? So you've got like, you know, the, the average is, is 80. These are 60 away from the mean. So you add those um, to those entries and divide by the number of entries, you're going to have less, um, you know, the answer is going to be less. Because if they were such that, these two, these two numbers were such that, that their distance away from the mean was greater than 80, if it was greater than 80, then that would cause the standard deviation to increase. If they were both equal to 80, the same as the standard deviation, it would cause the standard deviation to stay the same. Okay, so the distance away from the mean is what determines what will happen to the standard deviation. If the distance away from the mean is less than the standard deviation, that thing will cause the standard deviation to decrease when you include it in the data. If the distance away from the standard deviation is more then uh, the you know the standard deviation the the uh, of the original data if the distance away from the mean of that is more then it will cause the standard deviation to increase if the distance away from this from the mean is exactly the same as the normal standard deviation the average of the original data then that data entry when you add it will keep the standard deviation as it was okay so that's how we can understand that without having to do any calculation so that's part d and i think that was it yeah that's that's answered this question all right, so I've answered it in two ways. One way is by calculation, and one way is by explaining how it affects your answer um, without calculation, because sometimes they do ask that, so it's important for us to understand. Okay, so that concludes this question number six from the January 2016 S1 paper. Other questions from this particular paper um, can be found when I get around to doing them, if requested, on the playlist that will be 
appearing in this region here. Other questions from the topic of mean, standard deviation, median, all these kind of topics will be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other qu uh, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And if you would like to watch a video which tells you how to use my channel to access um, what you need in an efficient manner, you can watch the video, the link for which will appear in this area. Thank you for watching and see you soon.